So I'm Rob Darnell, I'm the Director of Intelligence and Security Alliance, but importantly, I'm also one of the Crest exam writers and one of the Crest assessors. So the final level exam that we have is the Crest Certified Threat Intelligence Manager exam. So this exam, you will probably need at least four years of experience before you even attempt to sit it. Now, why is that? The exam is written in such a way it's not something you can learn. There is, of course, plenty of questions that will talk about different types of CTI, the intelligence cycle, and you'll certainly achieve a high mark being able to do that. But what takes you over the margins and what really makes you pass this as exam is if you've lived this. If you know how to run intelligence engagements, you know how to interact with customers or intelligence customers. The CTIM exam is very much written, it not necessarily role agnostic. So whether or not you're a consultant or you have an intelligence uh, capability internal to your organisation, such as a bank, this exam is applicable to you. It's complex, but it's all about the entire life cycle from end to end. The exam itself is sat in two different parts. We call them TIM1 and TIM2. So within two, TIM1, this is how now all changed. Where before previously you had 150 multiple choice questions, you now have 150 short form questions. So where before you would have four or five options to select the right one, you now just get asked a question and you'll be expected to provide either just one word or one very short sentence type answer. And that's very important to remember. They're all one mark, so don't waste your time giving us chapter and verse on everything. You've also got the long form questions. Now in TIM 1, you'll have one long form question. Now this is where you need to start looking at those marks and looking at the number of points that you've been attributed for the time that you've been given and make sure that you're verbose and to the point and that you get the exact amount of points that you need to achieve the pass mark. For both of those elements, you need to achieve 70%. In TIM 2, this is focused around both long-form questions and scenario-based questions. So there's one scenario-based question and a certain number of marks in a certain time period. So look at those marks and make sure that you're trying to cover off approximately one mark for every one minute that you sit in the exam. So in terms of the long form, and this is important, you'll be given four long form questions, but you only select and answer three of them. You will only have enough time to do that. So if you try and answer all four, not only will you not get the marks, but you'll also be wasting the time that you should be given to the other three long form questions. You need to achieve 70% in every element of the exam. Again, it's not aggregated, it's 70% for each individual one. It's sat in two, three hour sessions, so it's fairly long exam, but they're done on different days, but they must be done within three months of each other.